The takeaway is clear. When it comes to uncommitted sex, women are playing a game they can't win. Feeling used, or like a booty call, is the most common experience of women who engage in casual sex or hookups, whether they're teenagers or grown women. That just isn't the case for most men. From the magnificent Midwest, it's the Suzanne Venker Show, where men and women are equal in value, but wildly different by nature. Join us here every week as we challenge the culture's hugely flawed narratives regarding men, women, sex, and love. From coast to coast and from around the world, thank you for joining us. In her book, Unprotected, former campus psychiatrist Dr. Miriam Grossman introduces the reader to Olivia a college student at UCLA who had been valedictorian of her high school senior class and was planning to go to medical school. After she arrived on campus, Olivia had a short-term relationship with a young man. When it ended, she had bouts of binging and vomiting and ended up at the campus health center where she met Dr. Grossman. It turns out Olivia had had her first sexual experience with a young man, and she told Dr. Grossman she couldn't stop thinking about him. She especially couldn't handle seeing him in class. Why, Olivia asked her, do they tell you how to protect your body from herpes and pregnancy, but they don't tell you what it does to your heart? Carrie Cohen, author of the memoir Loose Girl, can relate. In her book, Cohen examines her promiscuous past, which included sleeping with almost 40 boys and men. Loose Girl analyzes in great detail all of the emotions that accompanied Cohen's sexual experiences. She reviewed the reasons why she had sex, why she chose the boys and men she did, how she felt leading up to each encounter, how she felt afterwards, and what she expected to happen compared to what actually did happen. At the end of the day, what Cohen wanted was for guys to like her. I let these men inside me, wanting to make me matter to them. It is difficult to imagine the young man Olivia slept with having bouts of binging and vomiting and winding up at the campus health center as a result of his time with Olivia. Just as it's difficult to imagine a young man authoring a book like Cohen's. The average guy who engages in commitment-free sex does not ruminate over who he had sex with or why he did it. He knows why he did it. Nor will he typically have sex with a woman because he wants her to like him. Many men have sex for no other reason than it's available. For a man, this might be a pleasant trip down memory lane counting up one's conquests, wrote Cohen. But for a girl, it's a whole other story. The fact is, many women have sex many young men, many young women, I should say, to feel attractive and desirable, to prove to themselves or to others that they can get a good-looking, high-status guy. But they're not really getting him at all. Most men will respond to an attractive woman who broadcasts her availability. Ergo, the woman who gets this man into bed isn't doing anything special or profound. What she really wants is his love. That would be special and profound. But she's not going to get it by sleeping with him. That women become easily attached after sex isn't just limited to college women. In one of the sexual assault claims against disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein, lawyers unearthed emails between Weinstein and his accuser that confirmed the relationship was consensual. The most significant exchange was this one. I love you. Always do, the woman wrote after the alleged attack. But I hate feeling like a booty call. Her message was followed up with a smiling face emoji. The takeaway is clear. When it comes to uncommitted sex, women are playing a game they can't win. Feeling used, or like a booty call, 
is the most common experience of women who engage in casual sex or hookups, whether they're teenagers or grown women. That just isn't the case for most men. Whether we like it or not, sex is intrinsically biased against the woman, writes Jennifer Joyner in a powerful article entitled, I thought casual sex would be empowering, but it was the opposite. She adds, Biological reality dictates that she carries the brunt of sexual risk while he wields the majority of the sexual power. Make their coital relations mutually selfish, that is, primarily about fleeting pleasures and not about caring for the person, and the woman always loses. The precise moment in history when the relationship between the sexes took a nosedive is when women en masse began to have sex like a man. Casually, with no strings attached, under the guise that this behavior was somehow liberating. The perfect storm for this still relatively new behavior was the sexual revolution, which proudly promoted commitment-free sex and the FDA's approval of the pill, both of which occurred in the 1960s. Prior to that time, there was, a, there was both a spoken and an unspoken narrative about sex, that it is meant for marriage, or at the very least, for a committed adult relationship. It's true that people didn't always agree on the marriage point, but they did agree that commitment was crucial. But we overlooked something in our desire for commitment-free sex. Contraception may be useful for preventing pregnancy, but it can't do a thing about male and female nature. It can't make men and women sexual equals. Yet we operate under the delusion that it does. From college campuses to our nation's boardrooms, many women try to pursue sex the way men do. No commitment necessary and they're getting burned. In a qualitative exploration of college hookups, the authors of the journal article, The Casualties of Casual Sex, concluded, among other things, that women's response to casual sex is very different from men's. The dominant notion of regret for females centered around shame and self-blame for engaging in sexual behaviors in the context of a hookup Not knowing their partner and the lack of further contact with a partner seem to compound their regrets and anger at themselves. The dominant notion of regret for males centered on disappointment over a bad choice of hookup partner. One female participant expressed this view, quote, during a hookup, females feel special, desirable, pretty. Men feel hot and in control. Afterwards, females wonder if he's going to call what it means, and did she do the right thing. Males feel nothing. Males don't care, just as long as they get laid. End quote. In other words, many women today learn the hard way what their mothers or grandmothers have always known. Sex for women is not the same as sex for men. Most men can have sex, not saying they should, but they can, with a woman to whom they are not emotionally attached and not lose sleep over it. That just isn't the case for most women. Even the most sexually liberal woman is surprised to learn that she cannot detach the way men can. She may appear to be indifferent in some encounters, but her reaction will often surprise her. Take Alyssa, 20 who has had six one-night stands and within the past year, two different sex partners. When asked whether she thought she should be emotionally involved with someone before having sex with a guy, her contradictory views speak volumes. No, sex is not that big of a deal. When you first have sex, it's a big deal. But once you've lost your virginity, it gradually becomes less important to be in love with the guy. The more you have sex, the less of a big deal it becomes. I get attached to guys I have sex with very easily because I'm very emotional. I think this is natural for all girls. If the guy is really a jerk, though, and I have nothing in common with him, then it's a lot easier not to get emotionally involved than if I like the guy. 
Once I sleep with a guy, I feel that there's a bond between the two of us because we've shared our bodies and left ourselves vulnerable to each other. I think of the guy as being mine in a way, even though I know we don't have a relationship. Jessica, 21, has had six different sex partners within the past year and characterizes herself as a strong feminist who, quote, doesn't need men in any way. She said having a career was very important to her and she did not want to marry until she was about 30. In speaking with Jessica, she gave the impression she found casual sex acceptable. But elsewhere in the interview, she admitted she didn't engage in casual sex often because she didn't want to get hurt. She also said she was frustrated that she could not find a formal date on campus. Although it bothered her that the men she's interested in were willing to date, Jessica ignored the discrepancy between her permissive attitudes and her desire for commitment. She also saw no link between her promiscuous behavior and the inevitable outcome. When I first go to bed with a guy, I wonder whether sex was all he was after and how he'll treat me in the morning. If I like the guy, I worry about whether he cares about me. Otherwise, I don't care what he thinks. I'm not especially bothered by a one-night stand. I think of it as opening up. If it's only for one night, that's okay. I have to have control of myself. I can't get so wrapped up in a boyfriend that I forget about myself. I have to maintain my own personality and ideas. I don't want to lose what's important to me. Amanda, 20, has had 16 one-night stands and within the past year, three different sex partners. When asked whether she thought she should be emotionally involved with someone before having sex with him, she said no. Her emotions, however, quashed her attitudes and led her to reject casual sex. If I had sex with a guy and I didn't like him, then I just wouldn't go out with him again. I would date other people. If I like the guy, then I do wonder whether sex was all he was after and how he will treat me in the morning. And I do think about marriage and what my family would think of him, what he would be like as a husband. I was very promiscuous when I was in high school, but within the last six months, I have become very picky about who I sleep with. It was time to settle down and start getting serious about finding a husband. Everyone should have their fun for a while and go crazy once they're away from their parents. But after a while, it isn't fun anymore and you want to start getting serious with someone. I didn't like waking up with strange guys in strange places. It bothered me. It made me feel used. Ingrid, this is the last one. <clears throat> Ingrid, 24, is a medical student in her mid-20s who once dated a fellow classmate. Several months into their relationship, the young man began to feel confined and complained to Ingrid that he wanted more time alone and to be with his friends. Soon the relationship began to deteriorate. Ingrid and the young man fought and she told him that if he could not devote more time and energy to her, she wasn't sure she wanted to continue the relationship. His response was to suggest they take a break. Ingrid thought she and the young man would eventually make up, but a few days later, he told her it was over. He said he wanted to maintain a special friendship with Ingrid, in which they would see each other occasionally and sleep together. But Ingrid wanted more than that. Several weeks later, when Ingrid was feeling lonely, she called the young man. She began to think that if he could handle sex on a casual basis, she could too. So Ingrid went over to his apartment and slept with him. Here's what she had to say afterward. I knew within 24 hours after I saw him that he's not in love with me. He didn't call the next day, and I finally called him that night. He was studying, and after we talked a bit, he said, Well, I've got to get back to studying. I felt used, even though I don't think I should. It's irrational. If we had gone out to dinner and talked, I would have felt he was interested in me. Or if he had called the next day, I wouldn't have felt bad. Instead, I called him and went over and slept with him, and he got what he wanted. But I didn't. He says he wants a friendship, but I think he just wants to keep things friendly so he won't be uncomfortable in classes and then just sleep with me on occasion. That really bothers me. That's not even enough for a friendship. I thought I could handle it the way he does, but I couldn't. And I feel pretty bad now about going over there. The common thread in all of these stories, folks, is that the women were often, if not always, unable to separate sex and emotion. That whole love them and leave them thing just isn't a female practice. That's a guy thing. Until recently, people understood and accepted this major difference between the sexes. 
They didn't know why men and women were different because the science wasn't there yet, but they knew it just the same. They knew it from experience and they knew it in their gut. Today, we have proof. The female body, it turns out, is steeped in oxygen and estrogen, two chemicals that together produce an environment ripe for attachment. Oxytocin, known primarily as the female reproductive hormone, is particularly relevant. Oxytocin causes a woman to bond with the person with whom she's intimately engaged. It also acts as a gauge to help her determine whether or not she should trust the person she's with. Men have oxytocin too, but a smaller amount. They are more favored with testosterone, which controls lust, not attachment. That's why women, not men, wait for a text the next day after a one-night stand. When a woman has sexual contact of any kind, it's an emotional experience whether she intends it to be or not. That's the kicker. The moment touch occurs, oxytocin gets released and the attachment process begins. It just doesn't happen the same way for men. As a result of these circumstances, there does exist a double standard in which men can, quote, get away with having casual sex in a way that women can't. But this double standard doesn't cause men and women to behave differently, as we often hear from the culture. It exists as a result of men's ability to separate sex and emotion. That's not to say men should sleep around simply because they can. It just means that it's common knowledge that they have less to lose. That's the underlying reason for the double standard. It's true, more women than ever are engaging in premarital sex, often without a great deal of courtship beforehand. But this behavior doesn't in any way alter the unique sexual psychologies of women and men. Women can try and act like men all they want, but the results will be drastically different. Now, perhaps you're a woman who insists she can handle commitment-free sex. I'm not looking to get married right now, you say, so it's fine. And you may not, in fact, be looking to get married. But I don't believe for a moment that you don't want something to come from a hookup. Almost every woman wants a relationship of some sort, even if she's not ready for marriage. No matter what stage of life she's in, it is a rare woman who just wants sex. On the contrary, a woman's enjoyment of sex depends on whether or not She has a committed relationship with a man she can trust. And this takes time to build. That most men can separate sex and emotion more easily than most women can isn't the end of the conversation, though. There's also this. A booty call, or a random hookup, does not lead to the kind of relationship most women crave. Nothing proves this to be true better than the Me Too movement. After the deserved fall of a very few powerful men, Stories of supposed sexual harassment that turned out to be nothing more than a daint gone bad, the most infamous one being between Aziz Ansari and Katie Way, who accused Ansari of sexual coercion in the middle in an article for the website Babe, began to surface. These stories demonstrate how vastly different men and women approach uncommitted sex. In fact, it was Me Too that led the New York Times to hire Jessica Bennett, former columnist at Time and author of the book Feminist Fight Club, as its new, get ready for this, gender editor. That's an actual title of a job. I'm a gender editor. Her first article, when saying yes is easier than saying no. In this article, Bennett blames, quote, dangerously outdated gender norms, end quote, for causing her and her contemporaries to feel awkward and embarrassed when they engage in casual sex. The implication being that if society didn't expect women to behave in a certain way, they'd be able to have sex like a man. What a ridiculous spin on reality. It's contemporary gender norms, not traditional gender norms, that have landed women in this uncomfortable place. It is impossible to imagine any woman prior to, say, 1990 claiming that it's easier to have sex with a man than it is to say no to him. Yes, there have always been men who don't like to take no for an answer. But it was still the norm for women to say it and to subsequently be heard and respected. Quote, traditional mores set the default for premarital sex at no, at least for females, writes Heather McDonald. You guys might know that name because I've had her on this program. 
This default recognized the different sexual drives of males and females and the difficulties of bargaining with the male libido. The default no to premarital sex meant that a female didn't have to negotiate the refusal with every opportuning male. It was simply assumed. She could, of course, cast aside the default assumption. That was her power and prerogative. But she did not have to provide reasons for shutting down a sexual advance. End quote. Indeed, Jessica Bennett's premise that it's easier to say yes than it is to say no to a guy proves that sexual equality is a fraud. After all, if it were true that women are just like men in their ability to disentangle sex and emotion, why would women be so quick to cry foul after a botched sexual encounter? Why would office sex become a cause for the court rather than a welcome ride? Pun intended. The excesses of the Me Too movement speaks volumes about women's weakness not their strength, in the aftermath of the perfect storm. The sexual revolution in the pill did not empower women. It disempowered them by removing a woman's ability to say no and have that be the end of it. We as a nation have sanctioned commitment-free sex with no complaints from men. Thank you very much. And what do we have to show for it? What have we learned? that the female sex drive is not equal to the male sex drive. Honestly, it can't be. Otherwise, we'd all be humping each other like rabbits, and marriage and families would never be formed. There's a reason, in other words, that men and women are not the same sexually. The fact that women have babies and men do not is not some trivial matter. It's the whole enchilada. Birth control does not change a woman in the least. It just gives the illusion that she's just like a man, but she's not. A woman's need to bond with a man, to feel safe and love and committed to, is critical for her to feel happy, healthy, and whole. It also channels male lust into something meaningful. That women think beyond the physical, that they enter into emotional territory quickly as a result of sex, is something to celebrate, not something to denigrate or eradicate. Just imagine if every parent taught their daughters and sons to embrace it. And that ends this hour of The Suzanne Venker Show. As always, please share this episode with at least one friend you think would enjoy it. And don't forget to leave us a review on whatever platform you're now using. Finally, the best way to reach me is Suzanne at the Suzanne Venker Show.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week.